What's going on guys? Welcome to the vlog. Saturday here in LA and we're here for Heidi's Buck Bunny Collection event. Uh, it's like 11.30, the event starts at 12, so we're kinda just chilling for 30 minutes before we head over there. On him yet, so, so uh, let's see if he likes them. Hopefully, he doesn't reject me. I'm switching from my white vans to the Yeezys over here. Thank you so much, bro. That's so hey, sick. At least a great size 11. They, they stretch a little bit too. Oh, perfect. So, here she wants to talk to you guys and just thank you guys. This is amazing seeing you guys all out here. And can I get a big round of applause for the entire Buff Bunny Collection team for putting this together Woo! in four weeks? We're done. Yeah. 445. I think that might have been the most, it's like this is like tied with New York in my mind, like the biggest turnout. Thank you Santa Monica, thank you Heidi and the Buff Bunny Collection team for putting together a sick event. Now we're gonna, sh I need to eat, let's go eat. All right guys, we are here at Steak and Shake with Heidi and Hope Scope, the legging queen. Uh, I got two burgers, grilled onion, meat, cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, I, I said onion twice. Got two of those, I got an order of chicken tenders, a barbecue yours? sauce, and I got a chocolate milkshake. I'm too fried. We have made it back from LA and I figured I'd take the rest of this video to do a Q&A, just answer some of the questions you guys have. So I posted this photo on my Instagram yesterday and instead of just sitting down in one spot and answering them all, I actually kind of spaced it out throughout my day. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. What do you feed Nala? Blue Buffalo Wilderness, the chicken flavor. What tips do you have to minimize Nala's hair in the house? I brush her every single morning with this Furminator. Highly recommend if you guys have a dog that sheds. Would you rather have a time machine that allows you to skip forward one minute or backwards one minute? I would have a machine that could go backwards so that way I could relive a sick moment that I just had. I wouldn't want to miss anything by skipping forward. What was your biggest mistake when you first started getting into fitness? The thought that I had to do a different workout or different exercises every single workout. I'd go in and completely try to mix everything up. I heard the term muscle confusion back then and I thought that meant just never doing the same thing twice, where in reality, if I were to focus on a select group of movements and compound movements and focus on progressive overload, which is simply, that term just means getting better at movements over time, focusing on that would have yielded much quicker results for me. Don't think that you have to switch things up all the time or do different variations of exercise sizes to see progress. Here at the gym we have two AC units, one over here and one over here. They're both blown out and yesterday was the hottest day in Houston of the entire year so we went ahead and just opened up the doors for ventilation. We have all the fans on and I'm about to take this hoodie off. What's up? Good morning. How did you learn to grow a business? by messing up a ton and adjusting along the way. I think that experience and being hands-on is the best way to learn. What is your RuneScape name? I had three accounts. Chaotic Fox 3 Number two, that's some super, super, super late. It was the letter I, C, U, like I oh, see no. you, space, he, he, and then I had my main, my pure account, I see you, he, he, junior. What is yours? Merp Kerr. Merp Kerr. Oh. That's not as sick as Chaotic Fox, let me tell you. What do you do before the gym after a long day of work? Like, how do you get in the mood after being so idle? For me, it's a really good question because I work in this office right here every single day. I have to have some switches that go on in my mind. Number one, I typically change my shirt. I know it's kind of weird. I have some good music playing. Uh, your headphones, I don't have headphones today, but I changed the station to something I like. Number three, get warm. So I just did 
about eight minutes here on the incline treadmill to actually get my heart rate up and get some blood pumping. If I'm sitting down on my laptop and I walk up and I try to go in the gym, it's gonna be real hard for me to get in the zone. So my number one piece of advice for someone who wants to compete for the very first time, whether it's men's physique, bikini, bodybuilding, give yourself enough time. Whatever time you think you need, you probably need to add another eight to 12 weeks in most cases, I would say. Uh, I think a good length to maybe start would be 20 weeks if it's your first time, maybe 24 weeks. Uh, if you have a little bit of experience, maybe 16, it also depends on your starting point, but more time is always better. One more thing I want to add about competing. Be sure you guys have enough lifting years under your belt and you have a solid foundation of muscle. You don't want to be dieting down like your first year, like diet bulk, diet bulk, diet bulk. You want to stay in the surplus, focus on building muscle, especially in your early years, your teens, 19, 20, 21. It's a prime time to build muscle, so don't waste it constantly being in a deficit. Next question, will I ever build a second athlete gym? The answer is no, primarily because I don't think like this is home base, this is home. Houston is where everything started. This is the Alphalete Gym. There's no way you could replicate this gym and this vibe and the feel and the people here. So Alphalete Gym is one spot. It'll always be one spot. We're gonna focus on making this the best damn gym in the world. Also, the only way to make a lot of money in the gym business is to go very, very corporate. And I feel like you kind of lose touch of what the Alphalete Gym represents when you make those moves. You just strive for numbers and memberships. And not something I'm interested in. We have little baby Kelvin right here. How many more weeks? How many more weeks? Eight weeks. Eight more weeks. Yeah. Oh my god. Give me a shower, August 19th. August 19th. Yeah. We'll be there. I used to be in a band called The Mondays, and we would cover this song, and this is my part of the guitar solo. And then right here, we would switch to our other guitar player, Jordan. The next question, do I still keep in contact with the Gymshark athletes? Honestly, like some of those relationships that were built back in the years when I was with Gymshark are some of the best relationships like I have to date. Just to name a few people, Steve, Lex, Laney, Matt Ogus, Yucky, Ben, the owner. Gymshark is doing some amazing things. They're growing hella quick, and they're gonna be a massive name in the fit, in the clothing industry. I'm very, very proud to be a part of it, and I wish everyone on the team nothing but the best. Next question. What's your favorite memory with Heidi? Her last birthday, it was a surprise birthday party. Flew her sister down from Alaska. Her reaction to seeing not only a friend group, but like her sister in town, like everyone was on FaceTime that couldn't make it, and uh, like seeing her look at me, with like tears in her eyes, she's like, she never cries, and I saw her, like she's looking at me, just like full of happiness. Uh, that's probably my favorite. Memory. Have ever taken a loan, a business loan, personal loan, a uh, car loan, anything like that? I've never taken a business loan or a personal loan, but I have taken a car loan. Sometimes I finance out my cars. And all the businesses have never taken loans. They self-sustain within themselves and utilize their own money to continue growing. But as far as investors go, with the energy drink, the chances are in the next few months I'm going to be looking for some investors because that's a company that. In order to grow at scale, once you start getting thousands of stores and orders start coming in on a monthly basis, you need a lot of initial capital to get that going, like millions of dollars. So that's gonna be the first company that does most likely utilize a loan or investment. I'm dying, why so hot? Go ahead and pick any of these questions and ask it. Ask one to me. Will Alfie and Bug Bunny ever join to become one company? The answer to that. No. Is no. <laughs> why, why wouldn't we join in one? We're already, you know, we're together, all this stuff. So we like, say we get married and all that. Why wouldn't we want one company? <laughs> We've been over this in the last four Q and A's. Come okay, on. Okay, okay, okay. I like having my own thing. They're similar companies, but they're also very different. So Buck Bunny collections of like a woman empowerment brand. We don't have male stuff. They're just different. I just don't want to mix ever like relationships with business. I think they should be separate. Her run her thing. I run my thing. And we come together for a relationship. And, oh, Hey Christian, hey Max. what do you think is one thing you feel you missed out on? I mean, when I was younger, 19, 20, I feel like I missed out on like the kind of going out college scene, you know, socializing. But I think I'm getting that now, you know? A little, I'm a little older, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a thing. Most yeah. people party and stuff early. I, I didn't really drink or anything or go out or. Now you party every day now. Now I'm like a freaking, yeah, ratchet as hell. What made you start YouTube videos at such a young age? Uh, honestly, like I had no friends in college. <laughs> I was super obsessed with fitness and watching great foot videos. There's another question: uh, If I could meet someone dead or alive, who would it be? And 
Honestly, my person would be Greg Flick. He's like my, he's like my super mega inspiration. But what was I saying? What was the question? Uh, why'd you start YouTube? Didn't really fit in in college, and I just love working out a lot, so I had a lot of spare time. So I did videos, you know? Went to the community bathroom and started recording posing updates at 4 a.m. so no one would see me. Big question, we need to stop for this one. All right. How much money do you make? Oh, I need to pull the whiteboard out for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, you, you know, that, that's coming next. That's coming in, a few, in like a minute or so, but uh, people get mad at Max on his YouTube channel because they say if he pulls out a whiteboard, he's copying me. So apparently I trademarked the whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. You have to do like a chalkboard or something. I'm gonna paint on the side of the wall or something. Speaking of uh, me and Max, this right here is a new warehouse building. You can see they're starting to put up the, uh, the brick and this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, but this is what ours look, looks like. And again, the right half is gonna be warehouse for Alfleet operations. And then that side is gonna be myself and Max. Possibly Joe, <laughs> still don't know yet. But uh, this is gonna probably be done in like a month, month and a half, so yeah. Sheesh. Our hoodies just came in for the August launch. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, Max is oh yeah, I need a favor. <laughs> Always. 17 and a quarter. <laughs> Bro, Max just chased down the UPS truck. Okay, okay. How far did you run? I got halfway over there. <laughs> That's dedication, dude. We're gonna see Derek's calf size, because look, look at these bad boys. Mine are 14 and a half. Max's are like 14, 16 and a half. Kevin has big ones. Must have big calves. What? Give me that design. 17 inch calves. Oh my God. We're gonna go ahead and give out three of our Proud Nerd Satisfied hoodies. All you have to do to win one is give this video a thumbs up right now and leave a comment down below and just write August 11th, 10 a.m. Central. That's our launch time. And these are really cool, the Proud ones, because, let's see if you can get this, man. It's actually an elevated print, so like on certain parts of the, it's like a foam, certain thicker parts, like higher up than on really thin parts. And then if you look at our badge logo, we have a highly elevated rubber print. And we'll pick three winners to receive hoodies on the next video. You could do one thing without suffering the consequences, what would you do? Joe and I have the same answer. We've already discussed this. Uh, a high speed chase, running from the cops in a really fast car. What kind of car? I would want to be, honestly, a Performante would be a blast or a 720. Do you feel the YouTube market is too saturated to succeed? The short answer is no, but with that said, it is much more difficult now than it was a few years ago. I think that three things can happen. One, obviously stay consistent. Two, you need to find what's unique about yourself and highlight that on your channel. So whatever that is, whatever characteristic that stands out, be sure you highlight that. And number three, focus on providing value to people. Value can come in the, in the form or shape of entertainment. It could be laughter, it could be knowledge, uh, it could be fitness tips, whatever that may be, oh, those three things. All right, to wrap up the video, I wanted to pull out the whiteboard and answer the question, how much money do you make? I could just tell you a number, but I think there's a lot of value in the structure and backend system of how things sort of work, that if you guys wanna start a business, if you own a business, and like in the beginning stages, maybe you can take some of this away and save yourself a headache or a stress. Just don't make the same mistakes I did. And that's my purpose of like showing you all this. I'm not claiming to be a business expert. I'm not claiming to be uh, like a know-it-all. I am learning as I go. I am making mistakes along the way. But if I made mistakes, hopefully you don't have to make them. So that's my purpose with all these talks. This is how things are set up right now. Here's me, right up there, all right? Down here, I own a holding company. That's right here. Now, this holding company owns all these things. It owns Alphalete, it owns the energy drink, it owns the gym. These are all individual businesses, separate entities. It owns the uh, coaching business, ChristianGuzman.com, all my plans. It owns uh, Guzman Promotions. This is gonna be Ghost, my, my contract, my salary, my commission. It's gonna be Movement. It's gonna be YouTube. It's gonna be uh, any event that I do, Summer Shirting Classic, the bodybuilding show, all that's under here. It's gonna be any one-off promos I do, like the scale that I did a few months ago. Um, so that is Guzman Promotions, and I believe that's it. But essentially, Instead of having all these companies go directly to me, the holding company, one, provides a layer of protection for myself, two, it allows everything to sort of stream into here. All, every single dollar that these companies make, I keep a little bit in these separate accounts just for, so they can run properly, but I essentially transfer all the money into this holding account every single week things are transferring into here, and this holding account pays me a yearly salary, so the holdings 
pays me yearly salary, which is two hundred and fifty six thousand dollars per year. Uh, that is high. That is plenty for me. And here's the thing, man. I've like when I first got into business and I first started seeing money come in, I didn't. The back end stuff is not my strong point. I am good at creating things. I'm good at seeing big picture uh, things and kind of making things come to life. But this is not my strong point. And I was spending a lot of money. I am happy that I own my home. So I own two homes, my assets over here. Uh, this house, the house Beck is staying at, you know, the car, my Range Rover. So I do have assets and everything, but I was just not too smart with my money. I didn't really understand how the back end taxes worked. And I was just paying a lot, a lot, a lot. So now uh, everything's just more structured up. And I have my salary, I'm living within my means. I feel like I've grown up a lot over the last few years. I've matured and I appreciate money a lot more. Be sure you structure up. A holding company is super, super important. Um, highly recommend if you guys do not have one to definitely set one up. Even if you only have like two businesses, still set it up. Let the holding company pay you a salary. Uh, you can talk with your lawyers, with your, with your accountants, sort of see what that salary should be like. Um, and that's it, man. So this is my take home. Of course, the companies do make more money. Uh, I did have a question like in order of pro like of revenue and profits, like what sort of, like what are the order? I would say Alfleet is number one in the highest revenue. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna say Guzman Promotions number two. I'm gonna say, honestly, by the end of the year, uh, I would say right now this is number three. But the energy drink with some moves that are coming here, I'm gonna fill you guys in very, very soon. Trust me. Some really big moves are happening. This is number four right now, uh, and this will be number five. I don't really push my coaching like I used to, but I do think that this energy drink has potential to climb up and get over here with some moves that we're making really soon. I wanna thank you all so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next one.